Call to order the September 10th meeting of the Shelby Township Planning Commission. I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Mr. Dallow? Here. Ms. DeSico? Here. Ms. Casali? Here. Ms. Putros? Here. Mr. Turner? Here. Mr. Apone? Absent. Mr. Wozniak? Here. Chairman Moffitt, we have a quorum. Great. Uh, first, uh, first, I'd like to welcome our new member. It's been almost two years. I don't know how we've managed without you. So, uh, Asiel Putros. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, next item or first item is approval of the uh, minutes from the uh, August 27th meeting. So, so move. Support. Move and support it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, this evening we have four items, uh, three site plans, or actually four site plans, one of those being a public hearing. First one is site plan number 18-36, and I forgot my glasses, so I'll squint a lot. And I get a call from my mother afterwards saying, you, you know, you're squinting. Uh, <laughs> GS Rusalin LLC, regarding industrial business. Good evening, my name is Maria Lukasavich, <coughs> and I'm here to represent GS Rusalan, um, the owner of this proposed industrial facility in the Cherry Creek Corporate Park. It's going to occupy units six and seven, so we'll have to combine the parcels. Um, the building is approximately uh, just shy of 110,000 square feet. There's going to be 20,000 square feet of office, 90,000 square feet of uh, shop space. <coughs> And it's going to line uh, the west side of Shelby Parkway, uh, where it bends, where the road bends. And south of what you see there is the uh, common elements um, for the condo development, the Cherry Creek Park. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Wynn, who, uh, who looked at this one? Uh, Mr. Aloff is going to comment on this one. Scott. So I was uh, pleasantly surprised. The uh, site plan was relatively well put together. We only had a few minor comments. Um, mostly it's, you know, little notes. Identify all the easements. Uh, the combination of lots needs to be completed for construction. Aside from that, we had three items that were somewhat concerning. The building entrance on the northeast corner of the building enters right into the parking lot with very little buffer. I'd like to see that relocated maybe to the other side of the corner just so it's not in the immediate traffic area. Um, all these sidewalks should connect to the entrances so that we don't have people walking through the main entrances, through the parking lots, that type of thing. And the, there's a slight issue with the dimensions in the parking lot and the entrances. Entrances where there's two-way traffic require, requires 30-foot uh, openings, mm -hmm. and the end aisles require a 9 by 15 raised landscape bed to you know, buffer those corners. That may impact your parking calculations. I don't think you have very much flexibility in that, and that might uh, have a minor impact. But other than that, we, we're very supportive of the plan. It looks really good. Thank you. It's high praise that he was only pleasant. He was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from the board? I do have a question. The trees along M53, what you're proposing to do with them? The trees along M53 should remain intact. There's very little clearing. Um, the site as it stands now is pretty close to what it will be um, when it's fully developed. I like that screening from M53. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Moore. I move to <coughs> approve site plan application 18-36, Sarah D'Agostini, industrial be building located at 51795 and 52003 Shelby Parkway, subject to the submission of a revised plan addressing all department comments and the approval of any required variances by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Support. Uh, moved by Moore, support by Turner. <coughs> any questions on the motion? Hearing none, Commissioner Moore? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Wozniak? Yes. Commissioner Dalu? Yes. Commissioner uh, DeSico? Yes. Commissioner Casali? Yes. Commissioner Putros? Yes. And the Chair votes yes. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, next item is site plan number 18 38. Uh, 
uh, Nick's 22 Street Steakhouse. Hello, I'm Bill Andreopoulos. I'm one of the owners of Nick's 22nd Street Steakhouse, excuse me. And uh, we're just going to be upgrading the outside of the building a little bit. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Mr. Chairman, yes. You, you can see they've over the years they've done a lot of improvements, particularly on the um, the south side, and it looks like they're carrying that around to the front side and having that cultured stone look around the building. Um, and then uh, the the uh, front facade facing Van Dyke has some more details, and it's consistent with all of our standards in the ordinance and very attractive design. And we uh, recommend approval. Okay. Far cry from the bonanza. Was a bonanza? <laughs> <laughs> Sure is. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any questions from the board? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve site plan application 18-38 for Bill Andropolis located at 48900 Van Dyke as submitted. Support. Moved by DeSico, supported by Dalu. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, Commissioner DeSico. Yes. Commissioner Dalu? Yes. Commissioner Casale? Yes. Mr. Boutros? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Mr. Wozniak? Yes. Sure, what's yes? Thank you very much. Good luck. Have a Mr. great Chairman, day. If Thank you. Can keep, if you can keep these plans, we, we can stamp them tomorrow. So just hold on to them. It will leave me have them tonight if you could. Please. Thank you. Just leave it right there, Bill. Thank you. Okay, uh, next one, site plan number 18 26. Uh, Michael Lechurko, uh, Shelby Park Manor North. This is a public hearing, so I'll ask the secretary to read the notice is published. Charter Township of Shelby, notice of public hearing. Oh. Notice is hereby given that the Planning Commission for the Charter Township of Shelby, Macomb County, Michigan, has received a request <coughs> for approval of 340-unit age-restricted adult housing development. Applicant, Michelle Lechurko, Shelby Park Manor North, Phase 2, 2001, Crystal Lake Drive, Shelby Township, Michigan, 48316. Proposed use, 340-unit age-restricted adult housing development site plan, number 18-26SLU-5. Location, north of 25 Mile Road, east of Shelby Road. Sidwell number, part of 23-07-05-200-026. Legal description is as follows. The Planning Commission will meet on Monday September 10, 2018, at 7 p.m. in the Shelby Municipal Building, 52700 Van Dyke, Shelby Township, Michigan, 586-726-7243, for the purpose of holding a public hearing on the site condominium application. Application for the plan unit development may be examined at the Planning and Zoning Department in, in the Municipal Building Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Written comments may be submitted to the Planning Commission at the above address prior to the hearing. Oral comments will be heard during the public hearing. This notice is provided pursuant to the requirements of Michigan Public Act 110 of 2006, as amended, Shelby Township Planning Commission, Jerome Moffitt Chair, Raquel Moore Secretary. This was published in the Shelby Utica News on August 22, 2018. There were 436 property owners, and two applicants were notified by first-class mail on August 13, 2018. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Kirk, did the publication meet all legal requirements? Yes, it did. Great. Uh, could you also, could you explain the uses under the present zoning and if this uh, uh, special land use request is appropriate? Actually, I don't have the, the actual zoning. Is maybe Scott? I don't see the application with it, but I believe it's a multiple district. I don't have to look okay. it's, it's zoned R9, and in this zoning district, senior housing is a special land use. Permitted special land use. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Usually that's not a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Uh, great. Uh, do the commissioners have any questions for the attorney? Excuse Seeing none. That's Mr. All right. Chair. I'll, I'll get to you. Okay. I'll get to you. Were there any, any correspondence on this request? Yes, we did have one piece of correspondence, oh. Mr. Chair. Yes. And it was from a Michael Parzinski. His concerns are adequate screening and... Um, basically screening to both the uh, condominiums that are facing this development 
and then also the type of evergreens and trees that are being used. Okay, great. Uh, the format for the public hearing will be as follows. I'll have the petitioner come up and state what they're requesting, their reasons for it. I'll then bring uh, the uh, issue back to the board to ask questions of the petitioner. I'll then open it up to the public to ask any questions, make any comments, offer opinions. Uh, I will then bring the petitioner back up to address anything that's raised from the public at this point. I see the petitioner's representative here. If he could state his name and address for the record. And anyone that speaks needs to sign into. Thank you. Again, Pete Snyder, Urban Land Consultants, 8800, 23 Mile Road, Shelby Township, Michigan. Representing the uh, applicant, Michael DeCherco. Uh, this uh, is, uh, as was correctly stated, this is a piece of property. It's 19.41 acres. It's zoned R9, and our request is for age-restricted uh, adult uh, housing for that. I'm going to switch to the mobile mic because a lot of my presentation is going to go from the boards. Give it a second. Okay. Uh, there we go. All right. The, the piece of property, again, is 19.4 acres. It's immediately north of the Shelby Park Manor North uh, development. It's the fill-in piece in between Shelby Park Manor North and what is known as Stony Creek Cove to the, to the north. It's actually mislabeled on the site plan as Stony Creek Village. That was its original name, but it is now Stony Creek Cove, 19.4 acres. We're proposing 340 units of age-restricted uh, senior housing on the property in four buildings. Again, with age-restricted uh, adult housing, the zoning ordinance allows you to double the density. What's R9, you could effectively put up to 18 units per acre. Based on the acreage, you could put 349 units on this, so this is at 340. So it, it fits within the uh, approvable range for uh, for this use, for presuming, of course, the special land use is granted. Uh, the, the layout's pretty straightforward. Uh, certainly, I like it a lot. Uh, it's essentially a sort of a squashed figure eight for access with uh, Shelby Road entrance, connection to Shelby Park Manor North, and a connection up here to Stony Creek Cove. Uh, the four buildings have a bit of an angle to them. You'll notice an awful lot of open space associated with the site plan. I'll talk a little bit about that as well, the four buildings. These four buildings, again, as you already know, we're requesting four stories. So I'll talk about that as one of the variances. One of the other revisions that you'll see on this plan has to do with the original Shelby Park Manor. Uh, if you remember about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer ago, behind Building 3, we revised the parking arrangement back here to a provide for a covered, uh, covered exterior walkway that's actually proving quite, quite popular with, uh, with the applicant and the residents, and he wants to duplicate that effect behind this building as well. So that's a, that's a parking revision or a, uh, sort of a layout revision to the original Shelby Park Manor project that part of it intrudes or is placed on the Shelby Park Manor North Phase 2 uh, piece of property. So I just wanted to point that out in case anybody noticed that. Uh, the building footprint itself, it's the same. It's the same f building, 403 feet long. It's essentially 280 foot long buildings uh, with, a, with an atrium, sort of an open area connecting them. Uh, the, the lowest floor it has some meeting space on the ends as well. And there's sort of a main hallway through the middle, and, and the units are off the sides. The architecture, again, identical to what you're going to <coughs> see if you drive out there right now, with the exception that we're, uh, that we're requesting four stories. Uh, the, the proposed building height is just a little bit under 47 feet high. So four stories, 47 feet high. And by the way, just for reference, the zoning district normally allows three-story construction up to 40 feet high. So it's a, essentially it's a seven-foot height variance we'll be talking about a little bit later. Landscaping plan, um, very nice. It's 150 large trees, like 325 shrubs to be planted as the site's developed. Again, with the open space, uh, there isn't quite as much disturbed area because we're 
close to 40% open space on this. So a lot of what you see, you know, a lot of the, n the natural uh, trees uh, about from the middle, eh, we'll call it the middle half back, is, is, all, uh, is all densely treed right now. So we're preserving as a lot of that, which cuts down on the landscaping requirements. Let me talk. <coughs> Uh, in the application materials, there's a couple of things that would normally be required to be submitted that we're asking for the Planning Commission to waive. Switch back to uh, one of which is the required photometrics. Uh, the lighting is identical to Shelby Park Manor North lighting. Uh, if you want to see what it looks like and how intense it is, you can simply drive through there at night. Uh, and of course, the lighting fixtures are shown on the plan, but the photometric study, we just asking you to waive the photometric portion of the lighting plan. The fixtures are shown and they are identical to what's already out there. Uh, the second part of it would be the traffic impact study. Again, special land use of this size would normally require a traffic impact study. Age restricted senior housing is very well known to generate a lot less traffic than regular multiple. Again, uh, you're going to see uh, Institute of Traffic Engineers is going to, uh, their, their basic data is uh, about a little less than three trips per unit for age restricted seniors, attached units, and it's over six for um, regular. So we could do a traffic impact study. Uh, I think the only thing it would quantify for you is how much less traffic this would generate than if it were developed as R9 and without the special land use. So those two things we're asking to be waived as part of the application. Now let me, this, uh, this comes to you with a, a pretty fair number of variance requests. Uh, most of the variances, I think all except for two of the variances, are variances that have already been granted for the Shelby Park, the original Shelby Park Manor and then Shelby Park Manor North. So let me just talk briefly through each variance request so you're clear on uh, what it is that's in front of you. But the first has to do with the age-restricted uh, adult uh, request. Now, under your ordinance, a site is qualifies as age-restricted housing uh, if it's designed as an active adult community um, for for purposes of, in, excuse me, designed for the interest of purpose of persons 55 and older, meaning building design, layout, marketing, amenities, they're just aimed at 55 and older. That's not the variance part of it. The variance part of it has to do with your ordinance not saying uh, how many less than 55 could be rented. Again, federal law allows up to 20% deduction or exception to that over 55. It allows for situations where um, two married, one's 57, one's 54. <coughs> Technically, you couldn't lease to them if you had a strict 55 and older. Or the situation where a daughter, a single daughter's renting a unit right next to you know, her mother or her father. Um, so there's, there's generally recognized that there can be an exception to that. The federal exception is 20%. The variance that we sought and were granted for the original Shelby Park Manor and Shelby Park Manor North was also 20%. So we're going to be asking for the same variance on this for a 20% exception to the must be over 55 in order to lease a unit. Okay? Uh, and again, that's, the, that's an identical variance request that has, that's already been granted to the other projects. Another one is uh, the setback to Shelby Road. There are some of the some of the drive lanes are closer than 85 feet to the center line, which is the, the ordinance required setback. Uh, they are no closer than Shelby Park Manor North. Again, it's the, they're the same distance back. Uh, and that's just a, really that's just a design variance, keeping things as far west and preserving the, the easterly open space as much as we can. Uh, also a building to paving setback. Again, your ordinance in multiple requires 25 foot separation from the building to the parking. Um, our average distance between building and parking is over 25, but there are places where it's less than 25 deliberately. One is at the sort of the upper front door where we're trying to shorten the walk for someone from the exit door to 
say the senior transportation that's waiting to pick them up. We want to get that as short as possible. So 15 or 20 feet is um, 15 is a is, is a better number than 25 if you're you know if you're not not quite the pedestrian that I am at 50 and you know uh, and take a little help getting out to the senior transportation like that short as possible especially are the, when are it's those weather. The, are those the only circumstances that it's there, closer? To? There are others. There are others where uh, the the corners. Uh, the turns at the rears of the buildings. Probably. That would be this corner, these corners here, and this corner here. So, but again, those are just coming around the curve. Uh, let's see. Another uh, variance is the parking. The ordinance requires, uh, I believe it's 2.25 parking spaces in, uh, in the multifamily district. So, Shelby Park, the original Shelby Park Manor was approved with one space per unit, which was, and it was poorly, it was not as well arranged in the original Shelby Park Manor. We improved on that with Shelby Park Manor North and put in, that was approved at about 1.5 parking spaces per unit. And he's since added some parking behind number three and he's up to about 1.68 parking spaces per unit. The phase two portion up here is, is proposed at one point, I think it's 1.76 uh, parking spaces per unit. So we're getting closer to the 2.25, but it is under it. And again, quite frankly, 2.25 spaces per unit is, is, is heavy for that type of use. Many of these units, they'll only have one car, some won't have any, and they're relying on other people for transportation. So. Again, all so far, all of these variances are identical to what's been granted uh, for uh, Shelby Park Manor and Shelby Park Manor North. And the last one, of course, is the building length, 403 feet. So again, it's the same footprint. Two new variances. One is a building-to-building -building setback. Your ordinance doesn't have a strict corner-to-corner. -to -corner to it doesn't list a separate corner-to-corner -corner relationship. Okay. It has, you know, front to back and back to back and front to front and side to side, but it doesn't have corner to corner. I have two situations, one here and one here where I have 40 feet. So I need to either ask for a zoning interpretation. I, I think the planner suggested, well, let's treat it like a side to side. The setback would be the building height, which is 47. Okay, and I'm at 40. So again, the idea is to keep these sort of compact and preserve a little more open space. So. That's one of the variants. The other variants, of course, the, the biggest one uh, is, is the four-story situation, okay? So let me talk a little bit about that. It's really driven by, it's driven by use and it's driven by design. Use, of course, it's age-restricted seniors attached with a central hallway, service with an elevator. It's not unusual to have four-story and taller buildings in that use. So it's not unusual for that use. But more importantly for this, what we've done is chosen to arrange the density in four buildings instead of five. This is a layout of the property, really where we sort of started at, with five buildings stretched across it. It's not, obviously, it's not as much open space. It qualifies, it meets the, it meets the minimums. Um, a lot more regular, it's a little more like soldiers in a row. What we're asking for is a design variance to take essentially the same density, three stories times five buildings, and go with four stories times four buildings with some storage space in the bottom. Really, if you just look at this by the numbers, the design variance, that Shelby Park Manor North up here, if you discount all of the landscaping that's between the building and the parking, you still are really close to 40% open space on this, okay? That allows us to preserve a lot of trees, a lot of open here, and, and moreover, the open space is in, it's in good spots. It's in, you know, it's in the views out, you know, this north is looking up here at the Metro Park. We got open space here. This is looking over the pond and that open space. It's, it's good views as well. So that's, that's really what's driving the, the request for four stories on that. I think I'm about wrapped up. I, I, uh, everyone recognizes that Shelby Park Manor is a 
the Shelby Park Manor and the Shelby Park Manor North. They're good projects. They, they are attractive visually. Um, they're in high demand. They're very low lease rates. They don't, they're not a big draw on township resources. They're well liked. And really what we're trying to do is just extend that concept through this development gap piece between Shelby Park Manor North and Stony Creek Cove. So with that, I think I'm done. I'm certainly available for any questions you may have or from the <laughs> public as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may be finished, but you're not done. Uh, any thought? Okay, well, let's just start off with uh, there, was a lot, there was a correspondence that talked about uh, screening between your development and the one to the north. That's probably best answered looking at the landscape plan. To the north of the project, immediately north, is the consumer's, uh, consumer's gas pipeline. There's about a 40-foot width that's cleared of the 100-foot wide area there. So there's a lot of trees up there. Um, we're not really emphasizing a lot of screening over here or over here because you're looking at, you know, essentially looking at 60 to 100 feet of landscape there. Screening on Shelby Road. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of trees here. We haven't, again, we've sort of pulled it closer to Shelby Road, very, very similar to what we did with Shelby Park Manor North, the original one, um, but we've planted a lot of trees here. So uh, does that answer the screening Maybe question? Mr. Wynn, what's required? Well, exactly. there really isn't anything required because yeah. it abuts multiple family. I think the, the letter was asking about screening for Cascades of Stony Creek, is that the new phase, Pete, that's to the north? Cascades of Stony Creek is 1,200 feet north of this. Up I, I think <coughs> it's, it's between that project and the other one that you came in with, the, the other multiple to the north of this. So I, I don't think it applies at this one. I think it I don't think it applies to the other one. Okay. Yeah, that would be the Stony Creek Cove site plan. Yes. So okay. I think it's between the Cove and the Cascades. and. I don't think we that's a, okay. that, that's a different issue. Okay. Right. All right. <coughs> Easily solved. Uh, questions from the board? I do have one yeah. question, Pete. Sure. Uh, the existing phase, phase one, is it on a separate parcel? Uh, yes. Uh, when you say the original one, it, it, it's off the sheet here just because of drawing scale. This is, phase this is Shelby Park Manor. So what you're proposing is phase two, right? This is Shelby Park Manor North. That's what I'm talking about. This is Shelby Park Manor North, phase two. Right now, right now, this parcel, uh -huh. even though it's physically separated by ownership of consumer's power, right now, this 19.4 acres is part of the cask of the um, uh, Stony Creek Cove parcel. So it will be split from that. I don't know if it would be physically attached to this or not, meaning unified in a single parcel. He may not choose to do that simply because of you know, financing reasons, but, so but it's going to be one project. So are you planning to have shared agreement for the shared parking um, lane, uh, the drive lane and the tension pond? Right now, it's all single ownership. Same applicant, same owner. But in the future, if one of them gets sold? If one of them gets sold, yes, he would definitely have to set that up. But right now, they're just apartments, single ownership. So there's no, there's no one else to agree to right now. So we can't have shared agreement between two parcels? We, if we it's could one if, they owner? Split, if they split them up, we would, we would require that. I think we could make that a condition that if they're split, then we would require the shared yeah. agreements. Right now, the idea is to attach it. So again, it'll, it, it's going to be a unified single project. As you may, re excuse me if I may so recall, um, th at one point, Pete, the first phase was split in half, and we had to do that. So I think it's good to at least put that as a placeholder here in case it's necessary. Yeah, it, it is a good comment. That one was split for financing reasons. It didn't actually ch change hands, but he had loan number one on buildings one and two and loan number two on three, four, and five, so he wanted a property line in between. Right. And that was a case where there was, the bank required, of course, the reciprocal right. rights of I use I think it's just access. good that the minutes reflect that. That's yeah. no, good cause comment. Because it has come up, it's, mm -hmm. still, it's still, I think, a, a lingering issue in some other parcels yeah. in other parts of the township. Yep. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. <coughs> I have a question. Yep. Sure. Hi, Mr. Snyder. Um, what's the occupancy rate on the first phase so far? Uh, just out of what he's building right now? Yes. Uh, he just showed me the sheet on the original one. 
three of the buildings have three open, and one of the building has nine open. That's on the original Shelby Park Manor. I think building one is full. This one's filling out, and of course he's leasing into number three. Um, and building four right now, this is the one that's under construction. This one was just recently, building three was just recently filed out. He's finding, he's finding good demand. So. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Okay, sure. Uh, the 403 feet proposed for the yes. each building, could you uh, review again the safety factor for a building of that length when 180 feet is permitted? Yeah, that's probably best shown back here. That 403 foot length uh, was a variance that was originally granted, I don't know, it was back in 1996 for the first five buildings down here, okay? And it, again, it's the same footprint that's continued from there to here. Again, essentially what you've got is 180 foot, 280 foot buildings that are joined in the middle by some open space. I don't know the logistics of fire code and, and length to exits. He's got exit doors here, here. He's got exit doors here and here. The lowest floors with the courtyards, um, they have exits in the front where they can walk around. So I do know that the exit doors meet the applicable codes because Tim Wood wouldn't approve. <laughs> he wouldn't approve what he already did uh, without if they didn't. I think the current code is 180. And um, with regard to the encroachments on the setbacks again, could you explain that, please? You, you, had a, you said you had an overall average over 25 feet. Yeah. So the, the, the variance that I believe you're talking about is, that is the required 25 feet f separation between the building and the parking or the drives that access the parking. So that would be 25 feet around the building here. It's closer than 25 here at the main entry. This is the same, this, it's closer than 25 at the main entries in Shelby Park Manor North, and it's even a little bit closer on these buildings. So the main variance is right here, th these four locations at that upper main entry. I think it's like 10 feet or something like that. But if you take the perimeter average, it's over 25. There, are, there is a section here where it's under 25 right at the corner and another spot right over there where it's under 25 in the corner. And that's just, I'm just swinging a curve around the end here and around the end here. And I think it might be under 25 right there. Is there already a D-cell lane there? No. I, I, I can talk about the connection to Shelby Road. It lines exactly up with Pierce Drive. Everybody knows Road Commission is very adamant about lining up connections right across from each other. There is not uh, a deceleration lane. There's not a bypass lane on the far side of Shelby as well. But those geometrics for that exact entrance uh, would need to be worked out completely with the road commission during engineering. I will say the entrance is the same style entrance as Shelby Park Manor North, meaning it's 40 feet wide, three lanes, uh, an entry lane, and a dedicated exit left turn lane and a dedicated exit right turn lane. So you got three 12 foot lanes plus the curb sections up to 40 feet. Do that again, three lanes what? So there's, there's three lanes, it's a, the entrance is three lanes wide. Mm -hmm. There's one lane coming in, that's 12 feet. One lane exiting, turning left only, that's also 12 feet. And another lane exiting, turning right only, another 12 feet. So that's 36 feet, two foot curb <coughs> sections on either side, gets you up to 40 feet back to back. And, and you're saying that th we don't have a D-cell lane because of the symmetry? We, we, symmetry? No, I apologize. We, there isn't an existing D-cell lane there. There is one proposed. Okay, that was my that's, question. I, I missed your question. That's there is a proposed D-cell lane and very likely a bypass on the other side. And tied in with that, uh, you were requesting a variance from the traffic study, or am I incorrect? That's not a variance. That's a... The Planning Commission has the right to waive certain application items if, they're, if the Commission feels that they're not really relevant to, 
to assessing the special land use. What I'm asking for is a waiver of the traffic impact study. The site is enough units and it's large enough acreage that it would normally require a traffic impact study. However, it's age-restricted seniors, which are w much lower traffic generators than a normal R9 would be. So again, a traffic study would allow you to quantify how much better off you are with this. And if I, you know, if I thought it was a tenuous proposal, I'd probably <coughs> bring it in just to help, you know, bolster my case. But I think it's a good project without the traffic impact study, to be honest with you. So we just so. don't know how detrimental it's going to be. Well, I'm kidding you. Yeah, <laughs> better than the better than a standard R9. That much is is assured. And about the four stories. Yep. Why four stories? Yeah, I know you said it. It's a standard, but uh, you know they're building this monstrosity in Rochester right now that's actually five stories, and it sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. The short answer to that is 40 percent open space. Instead of 25 or Instead 20. Of flat, no, no. All right. uh, Mr. Winner, any comment on the traffic? Yeah, well, I, I can, I'll, 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 do, I'll do that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry, Mr. Moffitt. Mr. Wynn? Yeah, I'll just a couple. Well, first, the, the 180 foot length requirement, that's not so much a, it's not a building or fire code issue. It was a zoning code issue for aesthetics, so you don't have these long buildings that are. Um, that don't have nice design. And usually when the Board of Appeals has waived that is when you had some attractive design. So you can see on the elevations there's a lot of, um, the facade goes up and back. There's a lot of recesses and projections so it's not a flat plane, which I think makes it look much, much nicer. That's usually been uh, the bulk and the massing are reduced in some degree by the articulated design. So generally we've liked that. Um, the, uh, the four stories, again, you may recall Pete was here a few months ago to present this informally, and I think we all felt kind of informally the trade-off really was nicer with uh, the additional vertical height and the more open space. I think it's a much nicer design. So one, one less building for one extra floor. Absolutely. Absolutely. How, about, how about traffic, I think, Mr. But, and I think the traffic is, uh, we, we, you know, we asked Pete to hook these projects up. So this is going to connect to the projects to the north and go out to 26, and you'll have also access to Shelby Road. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, I, I would agree, I think it's going to be lesser impact than if it was just a straight conventional multiple family development. I'm not sure it tells us any more information that's going to make an impact on the decision. Okay. Uh, this is the only public hearing the Planning Commission will hold on this special land use request. All Remarks will be entered into the record for Township Board evaluation. We are a recommending body. The Township Board will evaluate our recommendation, which is the legislative body. The Township Board will make the final decision on the special interest request. At this time, anyone is welcome to uh, ask a question, offer their opinion. Um, I would just need you to state your name and address and then sign in after you've spoken. Well, hi, Commission. I'm Patrick Chandler at 4350 Pierce. And like you, Chairman Moffitt, I left my glasses at home. Mm -hmm. So the piece of paper stand down here and I'll do a little bit of squinting. That's okay. I'm the um, current board chairman, board president, excuse me, for Park Place North, 35 unit condo association. So we are directly across Shelby. Our uh, entrance ways to our property are at Pierce and at Elaine Court. So. Um, Overall, uh, the first development has, has been good, even though I suppose we didn't really want it there, but they've been good neighbors, so there's no strong objection to any of that. Um, I have questions about the four foot, four uh, levels. It seems excessive, um, unless one level is dug down. I guess the way I'm trying to ask the question is, is the total height of the building higher than any of the buildings in the Park Place North facility? And I guess at four feet, I think the answer is going to be yes. But yeah, it's seven that. seven feet seven feet taller than these allowed. Than they're allowed. Seven feet taller, taller than, than they're, they're allowed, allowed in that space. Um, probably in seeing the plan for the first time tonight, the um, co-owners that I represent would have a real disagreement with the link in in the vehicle passageway, the link between Park Place North Phase 2 and the units that um, are on 26 Mile Road. Stony Creek Cove, I guess, is the operating, is the name, or whatever the name of that property is. The link in the traffic circle shown. 
Um, even in today, just as a construction road, it's brought a lot of additional traffic. And to have a um, essentially a cut through from 26 Mile, letting those residents come through to Shelby Township, excuse me, to Shelby Road, and uh, make a left uh, at Pierce, which is just a small corner intersection, to um, make their way south into town. Um, I, I personally, um, again, just seeing it for the first time tonight, I'm surprised and I don't see the value in that. Um, persons purchasing or renting at uh, Park Place North and Park Place North Sioux can reasonably expect to access from Shelby Road. That's 100% logical. Persons um, buying or renting and uh, the properties off a of 26 mile should logically be expected. And I would think their own personal expectation is that's their way in and out of their, their home. Um, so we are seeing cut through traffic already. And I would submit that uh, allowing that will at some point drive a traffic, will demand traffic and a traffic. Let me ask you a question. Can you access uh, 25 mile road from, from your house? Can I Pierce. access 25? Can you access 25 mile road from Pierce? Pierce is east yeah, west. But so from, yeah, but from I'd go Pierce westbound to Nickelby, I guess it is, or Park Park Ridge, Park View, Park View, either of those. There, and there, there are a handful of streets that, that Pierce can access 25 mile road. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just want to make this. Uh, I don't, if there's a parallel there, I don't. Really see well, it. You're, you're complaining that the, the, the subdivision that accesses just 26 mile road now can access Shelby and they should only access 26 mile road, which the subdivision that, that was created that you live in has access to both Shelby and 25 mile road. So it has access to a north south and an east west corridor. It's going to serve as a cut through. It's going to serve as a cut through. The comment okay. you're making is to comparing to a neighborhood. Um, of residential, and I'm on a condo unit on the corner of um, Pearson and Shelby, so I don't quite see the same parallel. Um, I think it's good that they're adding um, screening to the easternmost edge, and at the north, that, that's nice. There's actually not that many trees between that property now and the um, consumer's line, so that, that will actually enhance the view, I think. Um, I don't, I think maybe, since there's certainly a disagreement or a difference of opinion with what you said, I don't think the applicant should be given a waiver on the traffic study. I think it makes sense, and it's a township requirement, and why, why, wouldn't, why wouldn't we want to do that? Um, there was mention of a bypass lane. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but if it's on the southbound, if I'm wrong, obviously you'll correct me, but if it's on southbound Shelby, um, that would bring traffic right into the culvert and, or obviously you'd fix that, but the culvert or right up against the sidewalk on southbound Shelby. So depending on where the bypass lane is would be potentially a concern if it means expanding Shelby to the west because there's really not much real estate between the edge of the road, the culvert, and what you all know is a very busy sidewalk for cyclists and main access into the park. Would have been a good time to have my glasses now. I could see the rest of my remarks. Um, I suppose from what I've heard tonight, those would be the main things I'd want to raise to the commission. Thank you. All right, thank you. Could you yeah, make sure you sign in, sir, please? Yes. Sir, could you sign in? Oh, sure. Yeah, thanks. Does anyone else wish to comment? Not once, twice, three times? Okay, so back to the board. Um, <clears throat> I guess the question is on the only, I mean, there were some opinions. The question I had was on the, by, I, I heard was from the bypass lane. Um, do you want to comment uh, on that? Or? Yeah, I, let me address the bypass lane first. That would be completely up to the requirements of the Macomb County Department of Roads as to whether, and of course, they would only be able to do whatever they do inside the existing road right of way. They're not going to compel, uh, you know, additional right of way over this. So, uh, if it's in parallel with what they did for the original Shelby Park Manor North, they did require a slight widening uh, in that area. Um, but again, that's that's subject to engineering. Let me talk a little bit about the connection to the Cascades. Uh, excuse me to. Um, Stony Creek 
really it's, it affects all of those it it's off the scope of this plan but uh, the original Stony Creek apartments uh, extended down to this line we have the you know 280 units of apartment 240 units of apartments there's a you know, 198 units of um, condo called the Cascades and then you recently uh, approved Stony Creek Cove all of those units exit a single entrance onto 26 mile road that's a situation that wouldn't be approved nowadays by the fire marshal. Anytime you go over 40 units, you need two ways in and out. So it is of utmost importance that some kind of connection be made from this property through to Shelby Road. You have to to meet fire code. So that this connection of some sort from the south property line of Stony Creek Cove and Shelby Road is a requirement of the fire department. Uh, to his point, I think we have made this connection uh, as awkward as possible in a, in a hopes of discouraging cut through. I mean, somebody driving through some right angles, turn, traffic circle, up. Yes, it could be used as a back way in, but I'm pretty sure most people are just going to go up Shelby Road or come down Shelby Road because that's probably going to be a lot more efficient and have a lot less conflicts and uh, it's going to avoid the the speed bumps in that are going to be you know in this development so again I, I that was a thought as I was laying this out and again I think you'll all sort of recognize that's an awkward cut through it's not a nice clean easy cut through at all mm -hmm. okay okay uh, Mr. Wynn I I'll kind of address most of my comments yeah. and the, the variances are necessary largely because of a design base variances these aren't variances that are being asked for because he's trying to overbuild the site and the proof is in the amount of open space. Um, they also have to be addressed by the Board of Appeals. Um, I think the much improved design from the original, each time Mr. Lachurgo's developed one of these, they've gotten better. The design's improved, especially with access and parking. So I'm um, very supportive of this, a very good submission and a very good presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So move. Support? Support. Moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, our, recom <coughs> our recommendation uh, this evening must be based on the following standards. Compatibility with adjacent land uses. Consistent with and promote the intent and purpose of the special land use. Compatibility with the natural environment. Uh, consistent with the capacities of public services and facilities affected by the proposed use. Protect the public <coughs> health, safety, and welfare. And the adequacy of public access to the site. Uh, we may recommend approval, we may disapprove, or we could table this to evaluate uh, the issue further. This time I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Turner. I move to recommend approval to the Township Board of Special Land Use Application Number 18-26, SLU 5, <laughs> Shelby Park Manor Senior Housing Phase 2, to permit the development of this site for an age-restricted housing project based on the following. The proposed use is consistent with a land use pattern along Shelby Road, which consists largely of multifamily developments. Adequate access is provided to the site from Shelby Road. A vehicular connection is also provided to the existing senior housing project to the north to the south and Stony Creek Cove to the north. An extensive pedestrian circulation system is provided throughout the site. A substantial quantity of open space is provided on the site. Adequate screening and separation is provided between this site and the abutting single-family subdivision to the east, and the site is not expected to create nuisances or impact the privacy of the abutting single-family neighborhood. Is there support? Support. Is there a move by Turner, support by DeSico. Any questions on the motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dalu. I'm hearing Mr. Schneider mention few variances not mentioned in the motion. Is that going to be covered if this motion goes through there would be no reason for any other variances can I answer that yeah, Mr. Dell he'll still have to go to the Board of Appeals and your approvals conditioned upon him getting um, his variances so that's a separate body that will have to deal with those thank you Mr. You're welcome okay. should I add that section to the motion then Mr. Wynn subject to approval of all variances yes. by the ZBA yes. okay I'll add that um, thank supporter you. support okay Anything else? Commissioner Turner? Yes. 
Mr. DeSico? Yes. Mr. Dalu? Yes. Mr. Casale? Yes. Mr. Putros? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Wozniak? Yes. Chair votes yes. Good luck. Next item is site plan number 18-37, Fog Shelby, LLC. come up and get ready you can keep doing that I'll, and Commissioner Turner has to be recognized thank you mr. chairman before we get too far into this discussion I do want to bring up a point which uh, should be brought up here publicly um, I recently took a new job where I am representing the employees at work at UPS I represent the union workers part-time and full-time so I uh, talked to mr. Kirk earlier today about does that pose any kind of a conflict of interest on in my part because I certainly would not want anything to come back on me or on the commission. So I'd like to, Mr. Kirk, maybe to explain. Uh, I, I've decided that I can remain impartial and independent and v view this strictly from a planning point of view, but I would like Mr. Kirk to comment on that. Yes, this is governed by the bylaws of the Planning Commission. There are four different types of <coughs> conflicts that can arise. Um, one is that a relative or family member is involved in the request, which is not here. You have no business or financial interest in the in the project, in it you're not a you don't have financial interest or own a neighboring property. The last one is there's a reasonable appearance of a conflict of interest as determined by the planning commission member. Now that member should state the conflict, which is what he just said. He should also state whether or not whether or not it will affect his impartiality, and then he can make a determination whether or not he feels he can vote on this or not, or pass it on to the commission. I'm pretty comfortable, but I would, given this is an important project and my labor management relationship, I'd like to get some input from my commissioners as to whether they think I could uh, remain impartial. If, if it's your pleasure that I stay involved and ask the uh, questions and vote, I'll be happy to do so. If you have concerns or questions about that, then I'd be happy to defer to you on that. So. I have no issue. Does anyone have an issue? No I issue. No. Does anyone have an issue? Make a motion. We can determine that he has no conflict. Do you want to make the motion? I'll make that motion. Is there support? Support. So, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, okay. thank you. Pre appreciate that. Okay, gentlemen. Evening, I'm Mark Roth with the Sidoc Group. Um, live at 30655 Old Stream, <coughs> Southfield, Michigan. Uh, we're representing uh, UPS here on this matter. Uh, we're the architects and engineers of record. And UPS is purchasing that existing building uh, on fog and will be converting this into a distribution center for their uh, facility here. Um, at this point, what we're requesting is to be the ability to expand the uh, parking lot and the truck staging area as well as adding some additional truck dock doors and some uh, doors for their uh, package carts. Okay. Mr. Wynn, did you uh, look at this one? or? Well, is, am I, let me start. Is that is that all you're going to talk no. about? No, I just wanted to well, get Why don't you make the, the full presentation? Right. Okay. Because I... Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, give, there's a little backstory story here. The, the back story is... Um, they came in with the site plan. We reviewed the plan, and let me just outline my concerns and let them address them. The first is um, the property zone, light manufacturing. Um, the property to the west is being developed for uh, multiple family and single family projects, so the zoning ordinance requires a 50 foot wide green belt or setback. This plan eliminates the green belt that exists. So that's the first concern. And not only does it eliminate the green belt, but it substitutes um, a loading area that could adversely impact that residential. So making sure that that's, that concern is addressed is of a major concern. Um, there's no specification for the paving of the parking or circulation area. No lighting details. Uh, we're concerned particularly on the north and the west side of the building. Uh, plans for the temporary building um, uh, needs to be provided, the elevations of that little building at the southwest corner of the site. 
There's also um, a, a drainage swale located along the western and northern boundaries of the site, and it appears that that's uh, plus a fairly substantial slope to those boundaries. Not clear how stormwater drainage will be accommodated. And um, you can see the engineer um, went through, and her comments are very similar to ours. So it, the, the main concerns are drainage and, and screening. Now, um, we didn't do a preliminary review on this. There was some urgency. Um, on their part to move this forward and we're happy to at least provide them with that opportunity but I don't have any urgency to recommend approval of something we just don't think works yet so um, I was <coughs> under under the understanding these gentlemen are going to come in with some alternatives tonight and we'll be happy to look at those but based on what's been submitted I'm not prepared to make any offer any support for that proposal at this time. Okay, thank so you we do have all alternatives we do we did get your letter um, I just wanted to have just an introduction as to why we were here so um, Casey's going to hand out a, some handouts. So what we've addressed or uh, understand your concerns about the screening. And so what we are proposing, we know along the edge of our property line, there is a, a tree line and a ditch. So we've re-looked at the driveway between uh, the building and the property line, which is there's a 60-foot setback. And we've come up with a 45-foot drive that we could use, which we could still then maintain the existing trees and not take those down and keep the existing uh, 15 foot of the green belt that's there, which would incorporate along with the proposed landscaping that's on the uh, retention pond that's uh, along the neighboring property. So we're not going to be impacting and removing the trees as originally uh, proposed, so we were going to maintain the existing uh, screening that's along there. Uh, the driveways, uh, the pavement sections are, are going to be concrete. Uh, it, it did mention that in our plan, but it, it will be concrete pavement through uh, both the driveways and the parking in the back. Um, there, as you said, there is a drainage swale that's currently there. We will be enclosing that drainage swale with a storm sewer system. Uh, the storm sewer will, will be placed in the exact location of where the drainage swale is currently. So we will be... Um, dealing with that and then there will be obviously have to be some fill brought in uh, to raise the grade in that area in order to make it so that we enclose and cover the ditch. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, one of, you know, so the, uh, while this abuts residential, the portion of the residential that abuts immediately adjacent to the building in the residential pro project is a retention basin for the residential mm -hmm. project. And, their site plan showed some landscaping along there. My suggestion to these gentlemen was maybe to um, engage that developer to see if there was some shared agreement that might work that they could cooperate and maybe add more. more <coughs> I guess my, my next question is, did you contact that developer and have you had any discussions about that option? Um, well, we've, we've yeah, it's, a, it's a yes or no question. Did you contact that developer? I no. gave you, I should, you didn't. Okay. We were looking at the compromises being we were keeping the trees in that in the green belt area that's along our property. And th they have landscaping along their retention pond. Am I correct? Well, it's proposed, but the requirement for screening and buffering when you abut residential is 50 feet. So I guess the question is if you pro provide something within the area you have left that's that's more substantial and you know, we have some flexibility but i think I, I don't see how we're how we get more out of this we just get less and i'm, I'm really concerned about that and i'm really concerned with the with the way this is being rushed i just i well, feel the, real the, uncomfortable the, with this the screening that they have along their retention pond they're butting up against um the light manufacturing right yes but they're butting against light manufacturing with a 50-foot green belt right now now you're you're taking away that green belt and you're putting pavement and loading docks. So to me, it it justifies a greater, uh, more trees and more buffering, not less. I, I don't see how how this works to the the benefit of the neighbors. That's why I suggested maybe sitting down with um, the owner of that project and seeing if there was some opportunity because there's a quite a bit of a shelf at the top end of that retention basin where, if it was loaded up, this might work, but. That's why I offered that name last week, so with the opportunity you would engage each other. I'm, I'm not sure why we even had that discussion, frankly.
My name is Casey Leach. I'm with SIDAC Group, representing UPS. I live at 907 West Oakley Park in Commerce Township. Um, what, what we were looking at with this project is the, there's, there's the new residential that's going to be the use, and, and that residential, you know, that, that's zoned LM right now, but it was approved for residential use. And we looked at the, the buffering that that use had put in around the perimeter, and we tried to basically match that with our plan. Now this, this fog property was part of a, a PUD that was approved back in 2008. And there were site plans that were approved for that which showed a drive going around the west side of the building where we have it, as well as parking on the north side. So what we're really trying to do here is go with the spirit and intent of that original PUD. Um, since that PUD, um, the, the residential use was approved to the west. So I guess that kind of changes the game a little bit. So we're, we're looking for you guys to, you know, we're providing some buffering there. I think that that the residential use being put in between the two light manufacturing uses poses some interesting concerns and some challenges. So um, we, we feel that, you know, not, not going all the way to the property line and preserving that last 15 feet with our green buffer as well as the neighbor's green buffer that's going in as well as the retention pond, we, we feel that that provides a lot of separation. And, and that residential use too, I mean, they're looking right out their windows on top of greenhouses and there's other manufacturing right next to them. Um, the only thing dividing them from the neighbor to the west of them is a buffer just like this. Um, so we feel that what we're proposing is the same thing that's already been approved um, you know, on the other side of this development on the west, as well as our property. Okay, anything else? Uh, well, we, we, I guess the only other thing we have to say is um, we, we did get a letter from planning and engineering and uh, you can see some of our responses, and we are, uh, we feel that we've addressed all of those comments, and we feel that we can satisfy all those. Um, I know that our client is trying to get in this building so that they can be shipping for the holiday season. To them, that's November 22nd. We know with all the mm -hmm. online shipping that's coming to Shelby Township, UPS would really like to support those efforts. So. We're, we're looking for some, some yeah, I mean, you help You also here. understand that a part of a challenge that we have as a board is that you walk into the room as you're walking up to the podium, you hand to something that says this answers all the questions that your planning department had raised. And Frank, I, I'm, I could read quickly, even without my glasses, and I still couldn't get through you know, all this stuff. So just to, you know, re you know, recognize that too. That. Uh, to the board with questions. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Turner. I have my glasses on, so that's good. <laughs> Mr. Leach, in your email, you mentioned that this project proposes minor changes from the original intent, and yet, Mr. Wynn pointed out, and is even as this plan that you prevented, presented at the last minute, this is not minor changes. This is a pretty major change. You know, I'd like to see, I know your deadline for getting it in there. You want to be in there by peak season, which is understandable, but you can't rush the project. There are certain restrictions in the ordinance. For you to say, well, the buffering is good enough, it's not good enough. If the requirement between uh, residential homes and this building is 50 feet, it's got to be 50 feet. And what I'm kind of shocked is that Mr. Wynn gave you the name of somebody to talk to on, uh, on the West to deal with this buffering, and for whatever reason, you chose not to do it. Now, if this is such a high-priority project, Mr. Wynn, when's the last time you, uh, they gave this plan to us tonight? When's the last time you talked to anybody at UPS about this? 
I've never talked to anybody about UPS. We talked to these gentlemen at the okay, counter a while back. A while back. Right. And just I would point out that the, the, the change in zoning that we approved recently for the expansion, you know, of, of that area, that hasn't even been finalized yet. So, I mean, we don't mind moving things forward in anticipation, but it's like, you know, I, I'm just really uncomfortable with the process, real uncomfortable. Uh, Mr. Leach, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I can continue. Yeah. Mr. Leach, yeah. do you um, know how many trucks will be coming in this project? When it's, I mean, it's going to be phased in over two phases. Are you aware how many routes and trucks are going to be there? Um, I, I don't have those exact numbers. About 70, right 70 package cars. Uh, my understanding is that's going to be, when it's peaked out, it's 70. There's also going to be one of those big rigs coming in to to transfer. It's not going to be domiciled there, but it's still coming in. Now, if you've got 70 trucks, in the morning, all the trucks leave about the same time, about 9 o'clock, because I've been to different sites. They all are going to come out fog. Do you know which direction those trucks are going to go? Do you know what service area this is for? I would have to defer to my client for that. Okay, well, I mean, I kind of know, but I'd like, like it for the oh, record. Well, I'm, I'm unaware of that. Harold Daniels, 7687 Partialville Road, Fenton, Michigan. Okay, Mr. Daniels, do you know the traffic? I'm sorry. Can you at least tell us who? who which UPS, your sorry. You work for UPS. Sorry, thank you. The question is the traffic circ the traffic coming out of there to fog and which direction they're going to go and what service area this is going to be servicing. Uh, we're not with IE, so we don't know what directions, but we do know it's it's the entire community. So Shelby, Utica. Primarily, it's going to be Mr. Chairman. Primarily, it's going to be North Macomb and Port Huron area. There may be some going west. So my concern is when they come out of fog, and they're going to be turning left on 23 Mile Road to go to Hayes, to go north. That's going to create a huge problem at that intersection, which is already pretty congested. And that, the turning lane in that intersection is pretty congested right now. Now, I had heard, Mr. Wynn, I don't know if you heard this or not, but I had heard through the grapevine that there was talk about putting some kind of a road to go out behind Kroger with a light on Hayes Road. Have you heard anything about that? No. Okay, well, that's just rumor then. The concern is with the traffic on the trucks. In the morning, I can see this being a huge mess. If you take the Madison Heights facility, there are lights where those trucks come out on Whitcomb. There are lights on DeQuinder and John R. The other facilities have lights for, to control traffic so the trucks can get out. I don't see that here, and I see this being a mess. And I don't see how the traffic has been addressed. Seriously, look, I, I'd like to see the building go in. Both it's good for UPS, it's good for the township, it's good for the workers, but the problem is, you're trying to rush it to meet some arbitrary peak deadline creates problems, especially when you don't follow the procedure. I understand. Oh, you got? I'm done. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> down over here, was there? Did I notice? No. Mr. Chairman, can I have one yeah, more Mr. Comment? Um, so well, I'm a little bit bewildered by the the landscaping plan because. Um, along the west side, you can see from some of the pictures that I provided, there, there are some trees along the west property line. And what I would, would have expected was there, there's space way far apart. So what I would have expected on, on, on their side of the green belt, that, you know, there's still room to fill in there, that you know, more trees could go in there. The other point, and if you see from one of the pictures again, the, um, the, um, the pit, this picture right here, if you're looking at on my staff mm -hmm. report, that's looking south towards the greenhouses. And I'm standing on um, the residential property on the top <coughs> of that retention basin. You can see there's a pretty substantial area there, um, quite a bit of width, more than I thought that it, when you looked at the original plan. I really do think there's an opportunity to load that area up with, with screening, and that's why I had suggested reaching out to the developer to see if they could share some agreement. You can look at the photo beneath it. That's on the fog site, the UPS site, where the spacing between the trees is. At a minimum, you'd want to at least use the, as much 
put as many trees on your own property. That's why when I see this, it's like, well, I don't even know why I bothered even reviewing this. I mean, this is just a colossal waste of my time and your time more especially. Any other questions from the uh, from the board? I have a question Sally. based on uh, what we received tonight. There's a there's a comment where on the property to the west that shows all the buffering and it says proposed buffering trees to be installed by neighboring <coughs> development per approved Midtown Park landscape plan from 2013. So um, that is a substantial amount of buffering. Are we are you relying on? that development to provide that? Is that a true statement? I mean, because that does provide a nice buffer there. Um, I do see Mr. Wynn's point on um, providing our own, but I'm not sure why that comments are we relying on something from 2013 that was supposed to be done that never was done? Well, it will be done. It's oh, part it of, they still have that obligation to do that. Oh. But I thought perhaps we, with what Mr. DeMercurio is gonna be doing at his site, if these gentlemen could enhance that, that you might have, you could reduce the 50 foot green belt and allow that, that circulation to be there because you'd have really big trees densely developed together. And that's why I suggested reaching out and, and having that contact and maybe that could achieve it. I, I thought that's the best option. It's not my job to come up with their design solutions. Mm. Right. That seems to be the normal case though. This is really poorly handled. What else? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I want to ask a question okay. to Mr. Wynn. Mr. Wynn, what is the time framing for adjournment? If you adjourn this one, I mean, I understand they are in a rush for whatever they're doing. They're handling it, obviously, not in the right way that you're looking for. What is the time frame of adjournment? Or can we just move on with it for some kind of approval where they could work with the city department and, and make things happen, or it's just dead? Well, no, it's not dead. We've you know they have three steps they have to go through. They have to get site plan approval, they have to get engineering approval, and they have to get building approval. So I know they're working simultaneously, submitted building plans which are under review. Um, they're also submitting plans through our engineer. So I think you know I'm still willing to work with them to come up with something, and if you know they could come up with something to us this week. We could potentially have them back on the next agenda in two weeks. Oh, that's I mean, I, I, I'd be willing to put it back sure. on. Hold yeah, I mean, I, I would agree that this isn't just some little tweaks that need to happen to a plan to, to accommodate or in, that they could work out with planning. Right. I mean, I wouldn't be comfortable. I, I think we need this. This body needs to see and approve something a little more permanent. I wouldn't be comfortable suggesting. <laughs> Fair enough. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to postpone site plan number 18-37 Fog Shelby LLC for further um, site plan modifications okay. to come back to the board when they're ready. Is there support? Support. Move by Casale, support by Moore. Any questions on that motion? Hearing none, Commissioner Casale? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Commissioner Dalu? Yes. Commissioner DeSico? Yes. Commissioner Putros? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Wozniak? Yes. Yeah. Chair, yes. Hopefully we'll see you gentlemen in a couple weeks. Uh, next item is a planning director's report. Chair, I have two items. The standard um, administrative um, approval form, 25 signed permits last month and three temporary use permits. It seems like we're We've had more sign permits this year than I can recall. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why, why, but we are. Um, the other item, um, I gave you a, a, a site plan, a portion of a site plan, and a photograph. This is the new clubhouse that's being built for the Providence Park multiple family development on the east side of Van Dyke, north of 24 Mile Road. It butts Star Heating. Um, the buildings are five feet apart. Meet the building code. And uh, they, the question they had is they want to put their pool filter equipment and their air conditioning units between the buildings. Now, there's a five foot setback and they only have five feet in between there. Now normally we would send them to the Board of Appeals. However, um, this property is zone C6 and it, it's almost like a PUD type district and it gives the Planning Commission some opportunity to um, 
allow for variations from standards. Now, I did talk to the owner of the, um, uh, the apartments. He indicated to me that Mr. Uh, Randaz would start heating is agreeable. They're going to stone it, and you know we'd have to have some agreement, obviously. But I wouldn't have any objection if, if you didn't have an objection. How, so they're heating and cooling and they're pooling equipment in between that five yeah, foot I space. Think, yeah, the, yes. How, how big of equipment is that? I don't know. I mean, is that going to take the whole? That's a good question. I guess I'd kind of like to know that answer. Okay, you want before. me to find that out in sanitary? Yeah, because I, mean, I mean, there's also so when, I mean, can this equipment be mounted above? No, it's got to be on the ground. It has to be. In I can get. I can find an answer to that. That that and just some kind of permanence of the agreement that you know if someone. Well, how about if we put that on the next agenda? Yeah, why don't we I'll do that? Because I think All unless right. anyone you know disagrees, but uh, okay. okay. There's nobody here. So anything else? Is that it? That's it. I'll find out. Though. So it wasn't too bad, Commissioner Putros. You're gonna no, come back. You're gonna come back in two bad. weeks. <laughs> I'm liking it actually. Okay, very good. <laughs> Mr. Dalu? Motion to adjourn, Mr. Is your support? Support. support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.